you could sit up here and try to tell me that timing ain't everything if you want to, but I ain't gonna believe you, especially after today. YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, Darius Slay, he just made what was a tough situation for a lot of Ravens fans worse. It's like he confirmed it. Um, so that took a knife that was in a lot of Ravens fans' stomach and just twisted it that much more and made it hurt the pain for them that much more because this is something that a lot of Ravens fans wanted to happen. They really wanted this move to be real. And, hey, according to him as well, not just the guy who was on Twitter that started the whole thing, not just Jeff Zrebic who talked about it in his article, but from Darius Slay himself, he let it be known like, hey, this thing was real. Let's listen. I ain't want to get out there, but one thing I almost didn't know now, I almost, I was almost this close. A Baltimore Raven, I was this close, this close. But, you know, I wanted to be Eagle. I stayed an Eagle because I know me and Howard was going to figure something out. But the Baltimore Ravens was the first team that called and they, they offered just what I wanted. And I just said, hey, the Eagles do that, I'm going to stay an Eagle. So, it was it was nice now man I almost almost was a raven i was almost a different bird so he let it be known that he was almost another bird and that certainly would have been something marlon humphrey on one side darius slay on the other oh my that would have certainly been an upgrade for marcus peters not that marcus peters is bad by any means but darius slay it, it would have been nice uh, nice little one-two combo. And remember that day that Marlon Humphrey and Darius Slay, they were all doing the little eyes emojis with each other and whatnot? I guess it was real. I guess it was real. Now, we a lot of times we hear about Ravens being interested in players and whatnot. And you know they're going to do their due diligence on anybody. But this, again, according to Darius Slay, this went far beyond just interest because he said the money that the Ravens offered him, that was exactly what he wanted. It was exactly what he wanted, and he said that, hey, if the if the Eagles would have gave, given him the same thing, then he would stay with Philly. But had Eagles not given him that same thing, <laughs> see ya. I'm going to Baltimore. But, hey, it, 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 they ended up matching it. So it was almost like the, the Ravens, they, they've they been going through their own little non-exclusive franchise tender, their little, their little master class, so to speak. They've been going through the same thing, but uh, in a different way. But anyway, um, let's look at his contract to see what the Ravens offered him. Because from Philly, he got a three-year, $42 million deal. <laughs> three-year, $42 million deal. Uh, he got a signing bonus of 10.1 mil, an average salary of 14 mil. The total guarantees is 24.5 mil. How much he got guaranteed at signing was 24.5 mil. So, yeah, he, he got a nice, nice little chunk of change. Nice little chunk of change. And again, it's a three-year deal. So... That's what Ravens offer. So again, the Ravens, they made it real. So this just goes to show like something that we've been saying for the longest time, too. If there's a will, there's a way. Ravens, I've been seeing through y'all, man. Y'all, y'all ain't fooling me. With oh, yeah, we only got six, seven million cap space. That don't mean nothing. Well, I mean, it means a little bit of something, but it don't mean nothing because. If you really want to make something happen, you can make it happen. So, again, we, we talked about it earlier today. Since there was real interest, the real interest with Darius Slay, the fact that they are looking at DeAndre Hopkins, Corlin Sutton, um, and old Odell Beckham Jr., there is a real opportunity for them to land one of the three, unless those three are a smokescreen for somebody else. They already signed Nelson Aguilar. Maybe they want to go another route with a, the sneaky guy that nobody else sees coming as a signing. But I, I don't know. We'll see. But it, it does give you like it gives you real hope. But at the same time, again, it's all about effort now. I, 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 I wish I wish I know my, my guy bio laws and shout out to my guy bio laws and bio laws. And because again, and this is really for everybody. I always appreciate when people, if, if they disagree with something that we saying, they come at it with a respectful point of view. They come at it in a respectful manner because he had commented on the, the Darius Slay video. And he said that it's, it's almost like it's a narrative 
that the Ravens, that they go harder for defensive players. They do any and everything more for defensive players than they do for offensive players. And he gave some examples. He was like, did they do anything and everything for, for Bobby Wagner? And I said, well, yeah, they did because they actually offered more money uh, than, than the Rams did for Bobby Wagner, but he turned them down. Uh, but then he brought up Matt Judon and Zadarius Smith. And I said, well, when, when they were at the end of their deals uh, with the Baltimore Ravens, for Matt Judon, they weren't sold on him all the way. They placed the franchise tag on him, and they're like, oh, okay, no, we, okay, bye. We can do, we can get this somewhere else. Then was Darius Smith, when he was still with the Ravens, we knew they weren't going to pay him. They weren't. Um, and, 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 but when I speak about the Ravens really going after it with defensive guys more than offensive guys, a lot of times it's, it's usually about outside guys. It's more so about outside guys. But even with those guys, back to Zadarius Smith. When he was a Raven, we knew like, hey, when his contract was coming up, no. They were like, no, we're done. And I think the Ravens looked at it like, hey, he was, well, him, Matt Judon was a fifth-round pick. I think Zadarius Smith, I think he was a fifth-round pick too. They're probably looking at it like, oh, we can get another one of those. They were fifth-round picks. We, we could get another one. We, we'll be fine. Um, but then, remember last year. Last year when they tried to sign, last offseason when they tried to sign Zadarius Smith, they, they tried to get him. They tried to get him, but Darius Smith was like, no. And maybe he was just using the Ravens to, to boost up his stock to somebody else. But it turned out that the Ravens offer that they offered him was better than the offer that he got to go to the Vikings. So it's like, so Ravens be out here trying. But and I know that there's been times when they've actually on offense, they've actually offered more money to a player than other teams. It happened with T.Y. Hilton. And it happened with uh, with Juju Smith Schuster. So there are sometimes when that happens, it's rare. It's very rare, but it has happened. Um, but we wish that energy, we wish that effort would the, the emphasis was just turned up on it a lot more. Like the way that they'll do for a defensive play. Oh yeah, he mentioned Yannick and Gagway too. He was like, did they do any and everything to get Yannick and Gagway? And I say, yes, they did. Because when, when he was on the Jaguars, they were interested in him then. Obviously, it didn't work out. Then he went to the Vikings. They inquired about him early on, and, and the, 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 the talks fell apart. Because they were, they, were they were actually looking at Adam Thielen, too. They were looking at Adam Thielen and Yannick Ngakwe on the Vikings. But guess what happened? It fell apart. I wonder why. But then they circled back around. They circled back around, and they ended up getting who? Yannick Ngakwe. So when they really want somebody, especially defensive player, hey, they're gonna do every, any and everything to get them, any and everything if they really, really want somebody. Now another example of that is um, Justin Houston. Because remember a couple years ago, uh, when Justin Houston was getting ready to be a free agent, oh, he was a free agent. Ravens were interested in him. The Colts were interested in him, and they both really wanted him. He ended up going to the Colts, did his thing over there. Ravens like, oh man, we missed out. What happened a couple years later? They circle back around and they got him. <laughs> hey, Justin, come here, baby. You coming to Baltimore. So, again, but he did bring up the Jalen Ramsey. He brought up that one when Jalen Ramsey was a rookie. Uh, well, before he was a rookie, when he when during the draft, he brought up how um, the Ravens, they, they didn't do any and everything for him. And they didn't. The Cowboys, I think, wanted a first and a third. The Ravens only wanted to give up a first and a fourth. And that was that. But you know how right, Raven, they love that draft picks. Boy, they, they, they don't want to be giving up no draft picks, boy. Yeah, I tell you, but them draft picks are something. But anyway, um, I think you get where we're coming from. The the effort, the effort is real. When it's a defensive guy, oh yeah, Ravens ain't playing. They ain't playing no games, no games at all. But when a lot of times when it's an offensive guy, it's like Mm, well, yeah, I don't know about that one. Mm, well, no. mm, maybe next time. So, I mean, that's and, and something that we had brought out a lot um, really over the past couple of years, just philosophy. It is, it, that's a big part of the Ravens uh, philosophy. Obviously, they're, they're bread and butter uh, over the majority of their tenor as a football team as a franchise it's been defense it's been defense but um i think it's been it's, it's been a long time that they they do for an upgrade they do for a change they do for a shift and not to say that you would neglect defense at all no you, we don't want them to neglect defense but we just want to see that the assets really 
poured into the offense. I would love if they poured into the offense more than they poured into the defense. And again, this is not saying that you got to have a bad defense. Nobody's saying that. But if they will really do their thing uh, on offense. Oh, Roquan Smith. Forgot about him. Ravens were interested in Roquan Smith before the season even started. Remember, they were interested in him before the season even started. This was in an article in the uh, in the Athletic. I don't think it was Jeff Rebick's article. I think it was somebody else's, but I forgot who. But either way, they wanted Roquan Smith before the season began. He said Eric DeCosta even called, checked on him and everything. But the Bears GM was like, no, no thanks. So time went about. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Boom, what happened? They circled back around and they got him. Roquan Smith is another example. So again, <laughs> the Ravens. With, with with defense, they be doing it. They be doing it. But on offense, it's yeah, it's just a little different, a little different. So anyway, team keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to Darius Slay for for confirming because again, this was not even just double down or or triple that. This was he quadrupled down on this thing. So that's how we we know that is real but much love to y'all shout out to y'all i love you and i hope everything is great for y'all we out Shout out to